Welcome to the 10th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. This is a continuation of a discourse that Moses is giving to the children of Israel, sons of Israel, as they are around Jericho on the eastern side of the Jordan River. And as I mentioned, that this book is more of an applicational book as far as taking the things that God is giving to man, to the Jews, to us today, putting it in our heart rather than just having it be a um, judicial book that sits on a shelf where lawyers have it, but it's something that goes in to us, this applicational teachings of the book of Deuteronomy. And so Moses continues and he says, uh, in that time the Lord said to me, and he's recounting of when he was at Sinai, you dress stone to yourself, two tablets of stone as the first. Now, if he dressed the first stones or God dressed the first stones or God dressed the first stones and then as Moses broke them, then he had Moses dressed the second ones. Of course, it says that right here. We don't know about the first ones, but unless it mentioned it earlier and I don't remember, which is possible. So again, the two tablets as the first. And then ascend to me into the oros, we have an or comes from that mountain, and make for yourself a wooden ark. This ark was not with something that he was going to take up with him, but this was the ark of the tabernacle uh, that would be in it with the cherubim on top. And he says, God says, and I will write upon the tablets the words which were on the first tablets, which you broke, <laughs> and you shall put them into the ark. So he uh, points out that he broke them. Wasn't supposed to break them, but he did. And these are to put them into the ark. And oh, how we have broken the things of God. God tells us to do them. We accept them, and oh, they're wonderful. Uh, these things I can see will really uh, make my life better, cause a lot less problems in my life, and I am going to keep them. And as soon as you say that and you go in and something happens, then all of a sudden you break the commandment. One of them, uh, whatever it is, it so they <laughs> were not any better than Moses who broke the tablets. And I made the ark, I being Moses, from out of incorruptible wood. Xylone, we have a xylophone, comes from that. It's a musical instrument with wooden uh, bars on it that you use a mallet to hit it to make a real nice sound. Xylophone. The xylone, a wood phone. And I dressed the theo placus Tas lithanus, lithan, lithinus, the two ta stone tablets, the o duo, is a derivative, as the prote, proton, a first, and a, the pro, or a prototype. And I ascended into the mountain, and the two tablets were upon my two hands. So he's going up into this mountain, has these two stones in his hands, carrying them up. Now, Jebel Sin Bashar, which I believe is Mount Sinai, is about 4,000 feet, if it's even that higher. That's above sea level, and they were already up. But it was definitely, they called it a mount uh, for that area. And so uh, he went up there, and he's gone up this mountain back and forth uh, a few times, and the people. Uh, and it continues, and it says, And God, he wrote upon the tablets according to the first graphene, a graph, writing. The deca, decayed, is a derivative, logus, which the Lord spoke to you, the people, in the mountain from out of the midst of the fire, in the day 
of the gathering. Uh, ten words. Now, it wasn't just a you know, one word and ten words. There were ten discourses. Another place it calls them discourses. I think it's Rima. And these ten major uh, commands that we receive, uh, committing adultery, have no other gods, Sabbath, so forth, stealing, or not stealing, uh, murder, adultery, are all in the Ten Commandments. And the Lord gave them to me, to the stones, and turning, I went down from out of the Orus, and I put the tablets into the ark, which I made, and they were there as the Lord gave charge to me. So I did everything as the Lord told me to do, brought them in, put them in the ark. Again, remember, he's talking to these people 40 years later. And the sons of Israel departed from out of Viroth, of the sons of Eakim Moserah. And um, now Aaron, trying to think of uh, what mountain Aaron died. I forgot to look it up. But the mount that Aaron died, I think, was in Edom. Uh, and it says there Aaron died. And he was entombed there. And Eleazar, his son, officiated as priest instead of him. So he became the chief priest, Eleazar. And from there, they departed unto, I'm going to read the Greek. You can see the English underneath. Gagad, and from Gagad to Etabatha, a land of rushing streams of waters. And this was probably up uh, towards Moab and um, the area that was uh, very lush near the Jordan River. Gilead is what it became called, the name became. In that time, the Lord separated the feeling, a phylum, a tribe, phylum in classification of animals and so forth, a tribe, the tribe of Levi, to lift the ark of the covenant of the Lord and to stand before Kiriu, to officiate and to invoke upon his name until this day. Day. So he set the Levitical priesthood up, uh, and this is how the people would come to God with their uh, desires. They would not necessarily, uh, they could pray to him, but they would go through and sacrifice and do these rituals through the Levitical priesthood. But today, that priesthood has been um, changed to the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek, of which uh, Hebrews, book of Hebrews mentions how Jesus is, um, a tr is a high priest of the order of Melchizedek, born of the tribe of Judah, not one that could officiate in this way, but his was a higher um, priesthood because Melchizedek received Abraham and received a tenth. And Moses came from the line of Abraham. So the higher up, which would be Abraham, then Moses gave a tenth to Melchizedek, which would put Melchizedek higher up than Abraham. And so um, Jesus is our intermediary, not a priest in the uh, different churches that have priesthoods, I believe, would be mainly the Orthodox and Roman Catholic and the Church of England. Uh, priests, you know, I suppose you can have a priest that can do Levitical, I mean Levitical's liturgy and lead things, but they're not uh, in between uh, us and the and God. We can go directly to Jesus and God with our um, once. And on account of this, there is not to the Levites a portion or a lot among their brothers. The Lord himself is his lot. And it's not a lot of land, but it was a, something that was chosen by throwing these little dice type of things. And the lot of Levite wasn't land. It was, was officiating to the Lord where the other tribes received a lot of land and not a lot 
again, they received a lot with the, of the land being portioned to them uh, as the Lord your God told them. And I stayed in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus stayed also. It says then in Matthew 4, 1 and 2, Then Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tested by the devil. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Afterwards, he hungered. So the same thing here. And the Lord listened to me. And in that time, the Lord did not want to utterly destroy you because Moses uh, begged the Lord to allow them to continue. And I think we went in the last chapter. It goes into that. And the Lord said to me, Proceed, depart before this people, and let them enter and inherit the land, which I swore by an oath to their fathers, that is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask from you? What does God ask from us? But only to fear the Lord your God. And Matthew 10, 28, Jesus says, and fear not from the ones killing the body, but not being able to kill the soul. But you fear rather the one being able, both soul and body, to destroy in Gehenna, or Hades, Matthew 10, 28. So we're to fear God. He's a fearful, something to be feared, not to take lightly. Think you can get away with your sin, uh, thinking that God doesn't care, thinking that there's no God thinking that God will not punish me, that I can get away with doing things. Um, God had Abraham told him to slay his son, Isaac. And then God told Moses to kill all the people in these villages of nations that they went into when they went into Israel. And then later to King Saul to kill the people of one city of which Saul didn't do, and Samuel pointed this out, and Saul lost the kingship because of that. So not fearing God is a dangerous place for us to be. We could end up being like Saul and losing the kingship, and we don't want to do that. So we need to fear God, take him all these things very serious. Uh, and to go in all his ways. and his ways, in the New Testament, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way, uh, the, was, the early Christians were called the way, not Christians, but the way. And Christ's way is different than the ways of the Jews. Uh, it's different than the ways of the world. It's completely special. Uh, and you have to be born from above to understand his ways. And uh, this being born from above is the beginning and then reading his word, taking it in, chewing his flesh, which is his word. The word became flesh. And then to love him. Now, loving God is like if you love somebody, uh, generally it's somebody that has you have a good relationship with, not somebody that there's a bad relationship, somebody that cares for you, does things for you, and you realize it. It's possible to have someone love you and not realize it. My mother, I didn't realize it for many years until I got to be a lot older, and she was uh, went to be with the Lord. I just took her for granted. And we don't want to do that with God. We don't want to just take him for granted and then come at the last minute and, re you know, oh, you know, I love God. I love you. No. Uh, we re the, To love him, though, you really have to understand the things that he did. And Jesus pointed this out when the late woman was pouring the expensive ointment on his feet. And the man, uh, the house that he was in, I think his name was Peter, told them, you know, about what this woman, you don't, you know, know what this woman is doing and so forth. And Jesus said, well, you know, I you didn't. Uh, give me any food. You didn't wash my feet, and she washed her feet with my tears, and so forth. And she who are he who has sinned much, loves uh, who's forgiven, who has forgiven sins have been forgiven much, 
loves much. And I love the Lord because I did sin a lot. And I realized that he died on the cross for me. And what more could I ask than somebody that would do all these things for me? A person that would turn his heart away from loving God, seeing all the things that God has done for them, is pretty cold and is what we will go down here as far as hard-hearted, stiff-necked person would have to be that way. So you're to, and to serve the Lord your God from out of your entire heart, from out of your entire soul. And so serving God, serving God in many ways, taking care of your family uh, in a church, serving in a church, um, and uh, other ways to serve the Lord, being a missionary, Bible translator, and so forth, and serving the Lord in a old folks home or in a rescue mission or in a hospital, all these ways you can, it's many ways to serve the Lord with your entire heart and your entire soul, not from just to get money or fame, and to guard the commandments of the Lord your God and his ordinance, as many as I give charge to you today. Now, to guard those, you have to know what they are, and we read the Bible and we find out what God has for us, and Christ's uh, commands are different than the ones that the Jews received here. I give you a new commandment to love one another. Why? That it might be good to you. Ev, E, Epsilon, Epsilon, you'd look and say it was U maybe, but it's Ev, uh, eugenics, a good genes, a good DNA comes from the U is good is in front of that word, and probably other words in English I'm not sure right now, but uh, be, so it'll be good to me. I don't want bad things to happen to me, nor to you. So all these things that previously are mentioned are all for us to have it good. Behold, the heaven is of the Lord your God, and the heaven of the heaven, and the earth, and all as much as is in it. The heaven is more than one heaven because it mentions it here in the heaven of the heaven. The heaven is the sky where the birds fly, outer space, and then there's the place where the um, New Jerusalem, the cube that comes out of down from heaven, is located. And Jesus came from heaven. He went back into heaven. So God, behold, uh, the heaven is of the Lord your God for sure. And we are going to be with him in heaven. And the earth is all as much as is in it. It's for us, the Christians and the Jew. Except concerning your fathers, the Lord preferred to love them. There might should be a, maybe a dash here. And he chose their seed after them, you. From all the nations, according to this day, God chose the Jews at that time. Uh, out of all the nations, and today instead of being a nation, which has its problems because not everybody in a nation goes along with the plan. You can look at the United, the United Nations or the United States. In the nations, there's all sorts of people who want different things. But the Christ is, uh, he preferred to love us, and he chose our seed, and um uh, from the nations, and we are scattered throughout the world, and we're not in one solitary thing. A church, yes, but there can be people in the church that just go there for whatever reason, something to do or to meet a have a, to meet a um, a mate and so forth. But with um, the true Christians, the the church, the gathering are all believers, and there's not, hopefully, the ones that are to become unbelievers. There are those, but uh, that's the uh, nation of the Christians. And you shall circumcise the hardness of your heart, and you shall not harden your neck any longer, of which uh, they did the... Um, children of Israel, and 
we can still do that today, hearing all these things and not taking them to heart, not doing the things and stiffing your neck and I'm not going to do it no matter what. And this is what happened to Israel. We want it, don't want it to happen uh, to us. For the Lord your God, he is God of gods and Lord of lords. Theos, Theon, Kyrios, Kyrion. Uh, Theos, God capitalized, small g for the fake gods. And the Lord, Kyrios, uh, of the Lord is the Lord of lords. And doesn't have uh, the tetragrammaton here, but he's Lord of lords as a, a ruler. And uh, he's the great and the strong and the fearful God who we, mem we mentioned, and who does not marvel over a person, nor should take a bribe. So he doesn't care if a person's rich or poor. If he comes into the church, he's got, uh, pulls in with a Mercedes Benz or a guy that comes in on a bicycle and blue jeans, nor should take a bribe. God is not, cannot be bought off. Can't find somebody else to take your place if you are sent to Hades. Uh, you cannot bribe your way out of the judgment of God. He is the one executing judgment for a foreigner. These were people, the prosilito, proselytes, people that came from other places to come into Israel. He, he executes judgment, good, righteous judgment. That is, he takes care of them. And the orphan, we have this orphano transliteration, and a widow. And he loves the foreigner so as to give to him bread and a garment. So a foreigner uh, is somebody that uh, comes to Christ, uh, whoever they are. Right now we have a problem in the United States with a lot of foreigners coming into the United States uh, without the cor correct um, procedure. And the United States needs workers, but there are a lot of people who don't think they should be able to just cross the border uh, illegally. And so they, uh, there's a lot of people against that. Now, but here he says he loves a foreigner so as to give to him bread and a garment. Now, as a Christian, I obey Christ. And Christ says, uh, to love everybody and to help them out the best that you can. Now, there may be a good reason, a good cause for this people not to break the law and come across the border. They may be, by breaking these laws, God will not bless them. But yet, I'm not the one that's judging. I don't go and find out if the person's done anything legally or not legally, but uh, open my heart and my help to anybody uh, that needs it and following the law of Christ. And he says, for you were foreigners in the land of Egypt, and we were foreigners from uh, the Jews. We're not Jewish. Uh, we are foreigners, but we have been grafted in, as Paul mentions in the New Testament. The Lord, your God, you shall fear. Again, fear him, and to him you shall serve. To him you shall cleave holding on to everything that you can uh, to him. You cleave on him. You hold on to him. And you don't let go. And I cleave to God by reading the word of God. That's the way I cleave to him because the word became flesh. So if I grab the word and go through it and cleave to it, then that's the way I cleave. And upon his name you shall swear by an oath, and not as I mentioned in the last chapter on uh, the Dr. Seuss book as a person that did that was being sworn in uh, in the United States to an office. Uh, he is your boasting. So I don't boast over the things that I have done. God has done a lot of wonderful things with the apostolic Bible. It's reaching people throughout the world. and um, But God is the one that's doing it. He's provided the means, the funds, and everything used a person like me that C average or C minus average in high school. I'm not a 
very intelligent uh, person, but with the Holy Spirit makes puts me on a different plateau of having the Holy Spirit can do miracles uh, in your life and in my life, which he does, and Jesus said that he, he would do my miracles greater than he. So the boasting is in God, who did among you the great and the honorable things, these things which your eyes beheld. And now he mentions in closing, with 70 souls your fathers went down into Egypt. And down here you can see I have uh, in the Aldine edition, it has and five, Pente. And so uh, in Genesis 46, 27, where it mentions these people leaving, it says 75. And in Acts 7, 14, when Stephen uh, is going through the history of the Jews, he mentions 75, Aldine 75, so maybe that should be put up here with 75 souls, but the Complutensian didn't have that, and I don't believe the, I'm not sure on the 16. But anyway, I don't know if it makes a whole lot of difference, but now the Lord your God made you as the stars of the heaven in multitude, and the same with the Christians, they're throughout the world. And so uh, we are now a multitude of people that can go out and share the good news with the rest of the world in whatever way the Lord has planned for you. And we'll continue in the next chapter uh, 11 um, with um, the title of Love the Lord Your God, and we will go into more on what it is to love the Lord uh, our God. Hope you'll join us in chapter 11. Until then, God bless.